The ability to land and to accept force is a key component of athletic development, of reducing the risk of injury, and is an important component of lower limb rehab in sports that involve jumping. In my opinion, the ability to land should precede the ability to jump. The reach and drop is a safe introduction to landing mechanics as it eliminates uncontrolled movements that may occur when landing from a height. This can be progressed to single leg, providing that the coach or the clinician is happy with single leg control. Adding a medicine ball to the exercises increases the acceleration and therefore increases the demands on deceleration. Remembering that the focus here is on landing and not on the jump, a small box to jump onto can provide a nice progression for the reach and drop. Jumping onto a box encourages the athlete to land in a flex position and this helps with the absorption of the forces through the active structures such as the muscles and the tendons rather than a stiff landing and shock absorption through the joints. A step down from a box increases forces with the addition of gravity. Cueing a soft landing is important as we understand that stiff landing is associated with injury risk. A lunge is a good way to progress single leg deceleration. A slight heel raise increases the demands through the quadriceps, whereas landing on the heel, we believe, increases the forces through the tibia. A challenging progression is to leave the floor with the back leg and to maintain control. Adding a plyometric element to the lunge prepares the athlete for deceleration and the transfer of energy into force production, because ultimately we're preparing these athletes for explosive sporting actions. In the same way that the reach and drop was progressed, we can now do the same with the introduction of lateral movements. Knee torque can be increased with hip adduction and with knee extension. So cueing for strong but soft landings is going to be important, especially with the introduction of a lateral bound. Adding a step down to the lateral bound increases the demands on force acceptance and the transfer of energy. Again, monitor hip and knee position and regress if the athlete is unable to control. From sagittal plane to frontal plane, the next plane to challenge is the transverse plane, adding a mid-air rotation to make the landing a little bit more unpredictable. A reactive jump and a land off of a box is a good objective measure to assess instinctive patterns of landing and compensations, but it's also a good exercise to add. As previously mentioned, the challenge of a mid-air rotation will increase the demands even further.